Okay, so hello everyone. Um, I'm Barry McLaren, and this is Matt Rooney, and we're from SAP UK, and we work in the cloud architecture and engineering team. And I just want to talk today about how we have um, integrated additional OpenStack services into our bare metal as a service solution. Um, so SAP has been aiming to consolidate a number of cloud platforms that we have internally um, around a shared OpenStack layer um, for the purposes of making the best use of our resources and infrastructure. Um, so we want to talk about how we have leveraged OpenStack and um, re-architected the solution that we previously had to better make use of it. Um, so I'm going to start by just giving a quick overview of what we do in the cloud architecture and engineering team and also what we've done since the last summit, which was in Austin. Um, I want to talk a bit about how we've re-architected our solution, um, how our new design has actually made it much more beneficial for us. Um, talk a, a little bit about some of the issues that we faced when we attempted to um, do this uh, re-architecture, um, and then what we intend to do from here. Okay, um, so the infrastructure that we work with is, we call it the infrastructure pod, and that for us that just means it's a standardized set of infrastructure um, where we have a number of uh, nodes, or bare metal nodes from a single vendor um, within a number of racks uh, connected by top of the rack switches, and then they are connected to, um, over a high bandwidth connect, interconnect to another rack with a mass, storage, mass shared storage solution. Um, so, and on top of this, then we deliver our, cloud, our HANA landscapes to our customers. And the benefit of this infrastructure is um, that it's optimized for performance, scalability, reliability, and security needs of our customers. And you can see that when we're talking about our nodes, we're talking multiple terabytes in order to support our um, in-memory HANA database um, applications. Okay, um, within our team then, we work on a solution called Cloud Frame Manager. And Cloud Frame Manager is um, a berm as a, as a service solution that we use to manage the life cycle of our infrastructure resources um, in the infrastructure pod and deliver our HANA landscapes for our customers. So Cloud Frame Manager, or CFM as I'll call it, um, acts as a control plane for the bare metal infrastructure and it does things like our server provisioning um, on our bare metal. It also sets up all of our network interconnect and our um, sets up storage management. Um, there's a diagram there sort of giving a quick brief overview of um, CloudFrame Manager. Okay, so as I mentioned before, SAP actually has a number of these cloud platforms and there is a, an internal push to consolidate them so that we can make the best use of our internal resources. Um, and the plan is to build all of our um, platforms on top of a shared uh, OpenStack layer, so then we can uh, use the same infrastructure. Um, okay. So we actually presented some of this work at the um, summit in Austin in April, and it was basically our first steps into um, building um, OpenStack into our um, existing solution. And that involved integrating with standalone Ironic um, to provide the bare metal provisioning for local node boot, um, which is not something we were doing previously. Previously, we were using all of our nodes with NFS root solutions uh, on a shared storage device. Um, but we had certain customers that required um, local boot. Um, we actually have this solution running now live in our data centers with live hand instances for our customers. But based on this, we had a look um, at our solution and we saw ways that we could improve it. So at the start of the year, we began to look into how we could re-architect our solution uh, to be more flexible. So CFM was designed with, with a specific use case in mind, um, a specific stack with a HANA uh, instance on top of maybe multiple nodes, um, which we internally would call a frame, which is also includes the network um, set up and the storage. But our solution, because it was tuned to this single use case, was less flexible. And since we had already done some work to integrate Ironic into our solution, we saw there was a potential to move um, even further towards OpenStack with a much more flexible design. So with this architecture, we met, moved to something a bit more componentized, where we could build it on top of individual OpenStack components. And we actually made use of um, the OpenStack API in designing our own API to make it um, as flexible and improve interoperability with our other cloud platforms. 
Um, so we've now integrated additional components such as Keystone, Nova, Neutron, and Glance, as well as continuing to use Ironic, but not, no longer in a standalone um, manner. So you can see we have a diagram of our re-architected solution. So we still have a number of ways of interfacing with our API. Um, as we call into our API, we now call into um, an authentication backend, which is actually Keystone. Um, the requests move through a number of plugins. So one of the plugins we have is to um, contact the OpenStack API directly. We also have other plugins to um, perform other operations which are not necessarily into OpenStack, such as to deploy our HANA instances. Um, and with this uh, sort of combined uh, solution, we are able to control our entire infrastructure and set it up for our customers. So I just want to move into talking about a couple of the problems that we faced and how we actually worked our way around um, to get a solution. Um, some of them have involved upstreaming our code. Um, some of them have involved being a bit more creative in terms of our workarounds. Um, but I'll, I'll go through each one. So the first one that we had is that we need to do um, read right as we're provisioning. So Ironic actually does provide read configuration um, automatically, but it's done during the cleaning phase. And for us, this wasn't um, a workable solution because um, because um, we need to provision the node for any customer, and customers are different. Customers will have different read configurations in mind. Um, so our solution to this was to actually store the read configuration that we require in the flavor, have specific flavors for specific stacks or different customers, and we pass this information to Ironic at the point of provisioning. So the first step in this is actually to store the reconfiguration in the properties of the flavor. So this is one of the blocks of metadata that we can store arbitrary data and extract them later. The problem we found that there's actually a 255 character limit on uh, each of the property fields. So our workaround was to have a non-standard schema. So Ironic has a JSON schema for defining your target reconfigura re reconfiguration when it gets sent to um, Ironic Python agent. So to get around this, we actually used a positionally significant um, array of fields um, in order to store some of the same data. So you can see an example there where it defines the name of the um, RAID configuration, um, the RAID level. So you can see the first ones are just RAID 1. The next one is then 2, as in the number of drives that you want to RAID. Um, the type of drives, uh, the size, and a flag that sets whether or not it's the root volume. So we have one root volume and one non-root volume. And in the non-root volume, we also have to set a mount point, which we use in our own solution to determine where this additional volume should be mounted in the file system. So then, whenever we have selected our flavor and are deploying our instance, we actually pass this information to the Ironic node whenever it acquires the instance UUID of the node or of the server that we are provisioning on it. Um, we have one more issue there, where when it's in the deploying phase, it's locked, so you can't actually modify the Ironic instance. So what we had to do is wait until we're in wait callback, and then and parse the information out of the node info whenever Ironic Python agent starts. So additionally to that, then we wrote our own custom hardware manager in Ironic Python agent, which picks up um, the RAID configuration that's passed to it, um, and then actually modifies the git OS install device workflow. So before the actual um, OS install device is set, we actually perform the reading then, and then we are able to get the um, RAID configured drive as the OS install device before the disk image is written. Okay. So then the next issue we had was Neutron VLAN isolation. So this was actually mentioned earlier, um, the multi-tenant networking in Ironic. Um, so previously, in older versions prior to Mitaka, um, Ironic only supported flat networks. Um, Neutron actually does support VLAN segmentation. But Ironic wasn't integrating with Neutron to provision the servers on the tenant networks. So the issue here was that we weren't storing the information about which switch port each um, of the Ironic ports for a node were connected to, which didn't allow us to then isolate traffic on specific VLAN segments. So we worked on this with some of our partners and actually upstreamed this, um, this bit of work into Neutron and Ironic. 
So we actually added the segmented network support into Ironic with its neutron integration. Um, so there was a number of changes that needed to be made there. We had to change the discovery process in Ironic Inspector to pick up the information about which um, switch port the, the network interfaces were connected on. Obviously that also required changes to the OpenStack database to store this new information along with the port information of each node. Um, we also then had to make a change that allows us to pass a single port to Neutron rather than all ports at the same time. And then finally there was, um, we had to work on the ML2 driver implementation to add the VLAN setting to the interface. So the good news is that this is now live. It's been available since Mitaka, um, and it's also in Newton. And we're also currently working on adding port group support. So we do a lot of um, port bonding um, in CloudFrame Manager. So this is something that will also be beneficial to us. Um, so it's in progress not. OK, so the last issue I want to talk about that we have had problems with is um, node locality in Nova. So as I mentioned before in the infrastructure pod, we have a number of bare metal nodes in a single um, compute cluster. Um, and then we have multiple compute clusters that then share a storage node um, on another rack. The problem we have there is that um, our HANA instances would need to share the same um, storage node in order to get the best performance. Um, so we need to know which set of nodes we are provisioning on. Um, so Nova does currently provide um, affinity, anti-affinity, but this is for VMs only. So this doesn't quite give us the solution so that we can determine that we have selected nodes all from the same infrastructure pod. So our solution was actually to implement a pod or um, infra uh, scheduler filter into Nova. So all of our ironic nodes are now tagged with pod specific information, including which um, shared storage um, device is being used for that pod. And then when we create a frame, we create all of the servers at the same time. So all the server instances are then scheduled to use the same pod um, by taking the um, pod information out of the ironic node info. OK, so just to wrap up, um, so we now have a new solution um, that uses a more component-based design. And it gives us a lot more functionality and a lot more flexibility for if we wanted to include additional OpenStack components in the future, it'll make it much easier for us. Um, by basing our API on the OpenStack API, we can ensure that that is much easier to do, but it also allows for interoperability um, between our solution and other, the other cloud platforms that SAP provides to our customers. And also because we were able to use our expertise that we'd already built up within OpenStack and also our contacts within the OpenStack community, we were able to overcome a number of issues and actually provide some code upstream to improve other people's um, OpenStack instances. Um, so looking a bit more into the future, we are going to be deploying this re-architected solution um, into a production environment sometime before the end of the year. Um, we're hoping that's going to go well. <laughs> Um, we are also looking into testing and integrating a number of upcoming Ironic features. And finally, we're looking into leveraging Manila in order to better manage our um, shared storage devices. So currently we use um, an in-house driver for our NetApps. Um, we would rather be using a Manila um, driver for our NetApp storage. Okay, that's everything. Thank you. Um, so a lot of this work is based on a, a lot of that work is based on a white paper that we have. So we have a couple of copies of it here if anybody wants to take one. Um, but apart from that, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, what type of uh, Tor switches do you have and which particular ML2 driver from Neutron do you use? I mean, that one that supports uh, ironic multi-tenancy feature. Yeah, so a lot of that work was done with Arista. So we worked very closely with Arista to um, create the Nova or the ironic Neutron integration um, and also on the ML2 driver for Arista. Thanks. Thank you.
Yeah. I have a question uh, related to the scaling. Mm -hmm. What kind of solution do you use to kind of scale your um, bare metal servers, server provisioning? Yeah, so we actually use our own in-house solution. So at the point of creating, we call it a frame. So we create a frame that consists of a number of nodes that are connected to a set of networks and switches. Um, each of those are then have some sort of isolation to ensure that customer data you know, stays private. Um, we can then scale up, add up and down with our own solution. And again, we're just sort of expanding that notion of the frame by adding additional nodes into it. So that, that's mainly that's all handled by our own in-house solution. How do you manage upgrades, patching, etc.? Okay, that's actually something that we're working on at the minute. Um, again, we, we, we have our own in-house solutions for that. Um, so because all of our um, compute infrastructure racks uh, you generally use a single vendor. We just um, get the vendor tools and are able to automatically call into them. So the current solution we're using is Ansible for a lot of that work. Um, and the lifecycle management, I mean, can you kind of um, um, upgrade or change the servers once they are old and replace them? How, well, how, how yeah. these works uh, or how do you address the lifecycle management of the uh, compute servers. Yeah, so again, because we have these racks, you know, we generally use those. Um, if we were changing specific nodes, it would usually be for if there was a fault or something like that, but then we can, we use our own solution, solution internally to migrate all that information across. Okay, thank you. If anybody has any additional questions, feel free to come up afterwards. Thank you.